okay we are discussing the notion of minimal polynomial right and uh, see the, the objective uh, as I stated before is to characterize diagonalizability we already have one characterization you compute the Eigen values compute the dimensions of the Eigen spaces if the dimensions add up to the dimension of the vector space then uh, it is diagonalizable okay dimensions of the Eigen spaces add up to the dimension of the vector space then it is diagonalizable we will look at another characterization in terms of the minimal polynomial okay this is another corner stone one of the corner stones in linear algebra that we have seen is rank nullity dimension theorem okay now to prove this theorem you need uh, certain notions uh, today we will discuss uh, two of them one is the invariant subspace invariant subspace of a linear transformation and then the notion of a T conductor okay so let me make these uh, notions precise so I will first discuss the notion of uh, an invariant subspace uh, T is a linear operator on V a subspace uh, W is uh, called uh, an invariant uh, subspace of the transformation T of the operator T if uh, this condition holds T W is contained in W that is an invariant subspace. okay what is the meaning that is uh, for all x element of w it must follow that tx belongs to w okay let us dispose of the trivial examples of subspaces w equal to singleton 0 and uh, w equal to the whole space they are obviously invariant So we will be interested if uh, there are proper subspaces that are invariant under T okay and you will see how this uh, plays a role in uh, characterizing diagonalizability. Let us look at some examples maybe before examples before numerical examples let me also tell you that uh, the range space. and the null space are invariant under T these are easy to verify so I leave the proof for you the range space and the null space are invariant under T okay we also have uh, another set of uh, subspaces that are invariant under T let uh, S be a linear operator on V such that uh, ST equals TS S is an operator that commutes with T suppose S is an operator that commutes with T then the range and the null space of S are also invariant under T. okay remember for us T is fixed for us T is fixed S is an operator that commutes with T then uh, range and null space are invariant under T all these are little exercises for you okay to verify in particular what is uh, relevant to the present context is uh, the Eigen space corresponding to any Eigen value these are invariant subspaces for any operator T because of this result uh, look at uh, look at T minus lambda I for any Eigen value lambda and this commutes with T T minus lambda I commutes with T so in place of S I have T minus lambda I where lambda is an Eigen value 
so by the previous theorem uh, previous result which we did not prove null space of t minus lambda i is invariant under t but null space of t minus lambda i is precisely the eigen space of the operator t corresponding to the eigen value lambda so eigen spaces are invariant under t eigen spaces of uh, an operator t are invariant under t okay this is the most important consequence for us okay let us now look at uh, one example where uh, the operator does not have an invariant subspace if you want operators for which there are invariant subspaces just look at uh, any operator which has an Eigen value this theorem says the Eigen spaces are invariant okay. So I want to give an example of an operator which uh, does not have an invariant subspace this goes back to the example that we have seen before okay I want uh, you to look at T from R2 to R2 whose matrix is uh, okay I am really looking at the rotation operator so the matrix of this let, okay I will straight away define T T is defined by the rotation operator T of x is uh, minus uh, x2 x1 this is the rotation by 90 degrees rotating the vector x by 90 degrees this is the linear operator I want to show that this operator does not have any non trivial invariant subspace okay 0 and R2 are trivially invariant subspaces so if I take a subspace which uh, is non trivial which is invariant under T the subspace must be of dimension 1 let W be a one dimensional subspace invariant under T I look for a one dimensional subspace and see if uh, it is invariant under T so I am assuming there is one such it is one dimensional so the basis consists of one element so let me take uh, W to be span of uh, a particular vector x star x star is not 0 okay x star is not 0 suppose T W is contained in W if T W is contained in W T W is uh, in particular for uh, for x star I will have T x star also as an element in W T x star should also belong to W but W is span x star so it is a multiple of x star this must be alpha x star for some scalar alpha W is spanned by x star so anything is uh, a multiple of x star but this means uh, alpha is an Eigen x star is not 0 this means alpha is an Eigen value for T but we know that T does not have Eigen values this is a contradiction so this T does not have an invariant subspace this is a contradiction to what we had seen earlier and so this T has no proper invariant subspace okay so much so for uh, invariant subspaces let us uh, keep this aside and uh, then look at the notion of uh, the T conductor of a vector into a subspace is this example clear this operator does not have a proper invariant subspace we had uh, looked at this example before and we have shown that this mat uh, this operator does not have an Eigen value if lambda is an Eigen value we had seen that 1 plus lambda square is 0 but this is an operator on R 
R2 to R2 so the Eigen value must be real so there is no root for 1 plus lambda square equals 0 so it does not have an Eigen value if it had an invariance of space it would have had an Eigen value okay uh, next is a notion which is rather similar to the minimal polynomial okay but a little more general than the minimal polynomial so that is another notion we need for uh, uh, characterizing uh, diagonalizability of operators the notion is the following uh, I am having uh, a subspace let uh, W be an invariant subspace of uh, the operator T let W be an invariant subspace of an operator T see for us the framework is uh, uh, T is an L of V V is finite dimensional we are trying to characterize diagonalizability okay W is an invariant subspace of T let uh, Y belong to V but not in W the T conductor the T conductor of Y into W that is the name the T conductor of Y into W I will define uh, this to be uh, the following uh, subset of F of T is uh, defined by the notation is uh, S T Y W the T conductor of Y into W W is an invariant subspace Y is an element that does not belong to W T is the operator that we started with STYW this is the set of all polynomials G in FT set of all polynomials with uh, coefficients coming from the underlying field for us either real or complex over the single real variable T we know it is a principal ideal domain. So collect all those polynomials that satisfy the property that G T Y belongs to W, Y does not belong to W but G T Y must belong to W, G is a polynomial G of capital T is a linear operator on V so G T Y makes sense I collect all those polynomials that satisfy this property for a fixed Y fixed subspace W and T is of course fixed collect all the polynomials that satisfy this property for a fixed Y for a fixed invariant subspace W that will be called the T conductor of Y into W okay this is the collect set of all polynomials I am going to leave it to you uh, to prove that this is an ideal this is a subspace and has a property that if G belongs to this and F belongs to capital F then the product belongs to this this is an ideal so it has a generator that is each element uh, each polynomial in this is generated by a unique polynomial that polynomial will also be called uh, the T conductor of Y into W but before that is this non empty first question we have defined something similar the minimal polynomial is there any relationship between the minimal polynomial and uh, the T conductor of Y into W what is the property of the minimal polynomial one important property it is an annihilating polynomial MT of any X is 0 so this Y also MT of Y is 0 what is the problem the minimal polynomial is an annihilating polynomial so m of capital T of any vector must be 0 w is a subspace so that must belong to w so to begin with the minimal polynomial belongs to this okay but there are more general elements that is the important point here 
there are more general polynomials but they cannot be annihilating polynomials remember that because if they were annihilating polynomials of t uh, different from m of t their degrees will have to be greater they cannot be smaller there are annihilating polynomials agreed but the degrees of those annihilating polynomials will be greater than the degree of the minimal polynomial minimal polynomial definitely belongs to this so this is not uh, empty okay this is a non empty ideal of the principal domain ft so this is generated by a single unique uh, element that will also be called uh, the t conductor of y into w okay so i'll simply say that um, the unique we will be interested in the monic generator the unique monic generator of st y w will also be called the t conductor of y into w it's also called uh, the t conductor of y into w so depending on the context uh, we will know whether we are talking about the subspace or uh, the unique uh, monic polynomial okay see we have seen that uh, the minimal polynomial belongs to this so can you immediately conclude that uh, this t conductor divides the minimal polynomial what is the meaning how does it happen let us denote uh, g let us denote let us denote the T conductor by G that is we have uh, ST of YW this is generated by the single polynomial G that is what I mean G is the unique uh, monic polynomial which generates this uh, ideal then uh, what we know is that uh, since uh, M belongs to st yw it follows that uh, g must uh, divide m g must divide m g must divide m but this g cannot be uh, an annihilator because if g divides m then uh, the degree of g is less than or equal to the degree of m in general this cannot be the this cannot be an annihilating polynomial of the operator t i'll i'll give you an example of this g okay but before that let's uh, prove the following result so remember g divides m so this is more general than the minimal polynomial the t conductor of a vector into a subspace is more general than the minimal polynomial of the operator t okay then we have the following result see our our problem is to characterize diagonalizability but what uh, we would right now do is to settle with something less is to settle with the triangularizability so let me give the definition an operator t is uh, said to be triangulable is said to be triangulable if there exists uh, a basis script uh, b of v such that uh, the matrix such that the matrix of t relative to b diagonalizable it's a diagonal matrix triangulable if it's a triangular matrix such that this is triangular triangular means uh, either the lower uh, off diagonal entries are zero or the upper off diagonal entries are zero we will stick to the lower being zero so we will say that uh, tb is it doesn't make a difference
we will say that the lower uh, triangular part is uh, 0 so it is upper triangular an operator T is said to be triangulable <coughs> if the matrix of T relative to some basis of V is upper triangular let us first uh, characterize upper triangular matrices we will need the following result it tells you something about uh, the structure of G I want to state this lemma before uh, before characterizing triangulability okay. this lemma will be useful there T is a linear operator on V and W be a proper invariant subspace of T. Let uh, lambda 1, lambda 2, etc., lambda k be the distinct uh, eigenvalues of T. And let us suppose that uh, the minimal polynomial m stands for the minimal polynomial let us suppose that the minimal polynomial can be written as a product of powers of linear polynomials that is t minus uh, lambda 1 to the r1 t minus lambda 2 to the r2 etc t minus lambda k to the rk the minimal polynomial is a product of powers of linear polynomials. then we have the following first there exists uh, x which does not belong to w all I want to say is this condition 2 is uh, T minus uh, let us say lambda i x there exists an x that does not belong to the subspace W T minus lambda i x belongs to W for some eigenvalue lambda so this is what we will show there exists an x which does not belong to the subspace W but which has the property that uh, T minus lambda I of X belongs to W for some eigenvalue lambda okay. We will prove this lemma and then use this to characterize triangular uh, triangulability and then uh, characterize diagonalizability. See remember already the minimal polynomial appears here okay. So the minimal polynomial will play a crucial role in uh, the di diagonalizability which, which is what we will at least state today okay the proof is as follows see before that I told you I told you that um, we will uh, have some information about uh, the polynomial G the information that is uh, provided in this theorem is as follows under the very mild condition that the eigenvalues of the operator T exist under the very mild assumption that the eigenvalues exist if the eigenvalues exist then you can write the minimal polynomial in this form okay. So except for operators like the rotation operator this condition is satisfied under this condition what this says is that um, this T conductor of the vector X into W is a linear polynomial can you see that the T conductor see we are interested in the T conductor of X into W from this can you see that uh, X does not belong to W but T minus lambda I X belongs to W. So all you have to do is look at the polynomial little T minus lambda 
this polynomial has a property that uh, x does not belong to w means the g is not the constant okay g is not the constant polynomial from constant you go to linear polynomials this says that g must be a linear polynomial okay there exists an x which has a property that the t conductor of x into w is a linear polynomial that is second condition really okay that it is not constant is the first condition okay as I told you I will give a numerical example but let us first look at the proof of this result see w is not equal to v w is a proper subspace w is a proper invariant subspace so this is not the whole of v so there exists uh, x in v such that x does not belong to w I will look at uh, okay. let me call it y there exists y such that y does not belong to w I want to now look at uh, let uh, g be the t conductor of y into w, w is not uh, the whole space v it is a proper invariant subspace I pick one element y which does not belong to w and then uh, construct in principle the t conductor of y into w I am calling that uh, t conductor as g can you see that g cannot be constant. g cannot be a constant why because if g were a constant then uh, what is the property that g satisfies g t y belongs to w okay this uh, this property is satisfied by g in fact among all those polynomials that satisfy this condition g is the one with uh, the least degree coefficient of the uh, highest degree is 1 etc coefficient of highest degree is 1 this is a unique monic polynomial that satisfies this condition. So if g were a constant uh, then this would be a constant constant times y belongs to w means y belongs to w but y is something that we started with does not belong to w. So g is not a constant g is not a constant polynomial so it must be t minus lambda j into h of t where uh, the degree of h is strictly less than uh, degree of g so h t y does not belong to w also if you look at t minus lambda j i x it is t minus lambda j i h t y that is g t y which belongs to w coming from this okay g is not a constant so it must be at least a linear polynomial so g is t minus lambda j into some h h could be a constant but h definitely cannot be a constant because otherwise you will get a contradiction here so uh, the degree of h is less than the degree of g and so h t y cannot be in w I am calling h t y as x now this x satisfies the second part x does not belong to w all right but look at t minus lambda j x that is t minus lambda j i into h of t into y which is this operating on y that is g t y g t y belongs to w so we are through okay so this is the x that satisfies these two conditions so what follows is that g is a linear polynomial that is uh, the consequence so to summarize there exists x which does not belong to w such that uh, such that the t conductor of x into w is a linear polynomial okay okay I want to give a quick example you please verify the details yeah yes ht ht cannot be a constant actually gt is 
Oh, we are proving HT is a constant. Yes, we are proving HT is a constant. We are proving HT is a constant. HT is a constant is also consistent with this statement. HT is a constant, this is a multiple of Y. Y does not belong to W, so this does not belong to W. HT is a constant is what we are proving, yes. Okay. Okay, the T conductor is a linear polynomial. Let us use this in characterizing triangulability. Okay, I told you I will give an example. You please verify the details. I just have the information. This example is uh, that of uh, the second example of an operator which is not diagonalizable. I want to look at the operator over R3 whose matrix is this. 1 minus 1 2 2 minus 1 2 2 0 the characteristic polynomial of this uh, matrix is uh, we are using p for that p of t is uh, t minus 1 into t minus 2 the whole square that is what I remember t minus 1 into t minus 2 whole square I will call lambda 1 as eigenvalue 1 lambda 2 equals lambda 3 equals 2. This is an example of an operator which is not diagonalizable. Let me take uh, let me take W as uh, W one, the Eigen space corresponding to the first Eigen value. Set of all x in uh, V such that R three such that a x equals uh, x, a x equals lambda x, lambda 1 x that is a x equals x. So this is the Eigen space corresponding to the Eigen uh, value 1, the first Eigen value. Remember that in this example we do not have enough Eigen vectors for the second Eigen value. The second Eigen value has only one Eigen vector spanned by 1 0 2 okay the second Eigen value has only one independent Eigen vector the Eigen space corresponding to second Eigen value is of dimension 1. I will take W1 this is an invariant subspace any Eigen space is an invariant subspace of the operator T so this W1 is invariant I want to give an example of uh, um, of the Y that is constructed in the theorem. So let me give this y as uh, 1 1 2 take this y what is the T conductor of this y into W1 verify it is T minus 2 for this uh, y please verify it is T minus 2 okay. Now remember that for uh, uh, in this example we have verified that the minimal polynomial is the same as a characteristic polynomial okay but the T conductor is a linear polynomial. So this is something more general than the minimal polynomial okay but it pertains to only a particular vector y. So please verify the details here this uh, should uh, sort of consolidate what we are doing there okay I want to characterize uh, triangulability. If HT is a constant, GT is just one factor, no? See, minimal polynomial. Minimal polynomial is T minus lambda one to the uh, yeah, yeah here. T minus lambda one to the R one, etc. G is just one of those factors. What is the problem? The is how it divides M T. If HT is a constant, M is a multiple of G. G divides M g divides m so m is a multiple of t uh, multiple of g so one factor uh, t minus lambda j for some eigen value <coughs> rest of them are uh, are here 
HT must divide one of the more HT main must divide uh, one of one more factor. Any one of those. Uh. No, we are proving HT is a constant. If it is a constant, then constant. constant. If it is a constant, then how it is divided? That's my question. But the constant is one. Yeah. yeah. The constant is one. That constant is one. HT is one. Pardon? Then we can remove it. HT equals to one. We do not know. Presently, we do not know. In this proof, we do not know what HT is. The only thing that I know at this stage, see, it is not a constant, so it could be a linear polynomial, quadratic polynomial, whatever. Okay, but at this stage, I can this mu uh, write this much. There must be a linear factor. Forget about H. But H now has a property that uh, its degree is one less than G. So H is uh, H T Y cannot be in W. That's the property we are exploiting. Okay. Remember, G divides M. The degree is less than or equal to the degree of M. But G in general is not an annihilating polynomial. Okay, so I need to, um, yeah, use this lemma to, yeah, use this lemma to characterize triangulability. Let's see how far we can proceed. So I want to characterize triangulability. This is the theorem. An operator tree is triangulable if and only if the minimal polynomial is a product of linear factors. An operator tree is triangulable if and only if the minimal polynomial of the operator is a product of linear factors. There are possible powers, okay, but it is a product of linear factors, okay. So I do not think I have enough time to prove it, but I will at least make uh, this observation that uh, if an operator if the eigenvalues of an operator lie in the underlying field, then the operator is triangulable. If, if an operator has all eigenvalues in the underlying field, then it is triangulable, okay. But not all operators are diagonalizable, okay. We have already seen operators, examples of operator, at least one which is not diagonalizable, but all operators are triangulable provided you only meet this minimum condition, mild condition that the eigenvalues must belong to the underlying field, okay.